We already are. Well. Hello, good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Welcome to the Lord's house. We'll go ahead and get started this morning. And uh, for all tuning in at home, we're glad to have y'all. But thank God for the opportunity. A lot to rejoice over and to praise God for. As a matter of fact, uh, one is sitting right down here, Miss Judy. It sure is a miracle seeing you here this morning. Uh, she's been through it. I went through uh, uh, the deal with her hip and, and, and having the surgery there. Now here she walked in this morning and praise God. So good to see you, Miss Judy. Good to have you here with us this morning. And uh, that just lets us know God can do it. Uh, some of you shared some things with me this morning and asked about prayer, and so we're going to be, uh, we'll, we'll lift them up to uh, the Lord in our, in our prayers, and because you need in God's hand, and we do. But I want to share with you this morning, because we do have several that have the sickness, and uh, we're going to pray for them, but we're going to have a special prayer here in a moment for Miss Neva. I talked to Brother Gene, and if, Brother Gene, if you're tuning in this morning, I love you, brother. I love you dearly. And Brother Gene, he called me this morning. He said, Preacher, he said, it's not looking good for Neva. He said, her vitals are starting to shut down. One thing I'm reminded of, brothers and sisters, until God has his final say, it ain't over with. Amen. There's still hope. There's still hope. Doctor said if she comes out of this, she'll have permanent damage to her lungs and da 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 da. Until God has his final say, there's still hope. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, in verse number 15, God said, I, I said before you, life that is good and death that is evil. God said, I say, pray for life. We're about life, and we're going to pray for life. We're going to ask God to restore Miss Neva this morning. We're going to have a special prayer about that. But God can do that, and I believe God can do that. That's why we read, and I was just talking to Jane about, that's why we read about Daniel in a lion's den, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, and, and David taking on Goliath. Those were real stories. Those were real events where God delivered. Time and time again, God delivered. And God gave us his word, and he says he has no respect to person. So if God delivers for them, God can de deliver for us. I trust God in that. I depend upon God. We were just talking in Sunday school about how he gave Abraham a promise and he keeps his word. So God can deliver. We got brothers and sisters today that have this sickness and we're going to lift them up in our prayers. Uh, Brother Alex and Miss Stormy uh, have been released. Uh, they're on the other side of it, but they're very weak this morning. Brother Alex is very weak this morning. He started the church and he had to turn around and go back home. So we're going to pray for Brother Alex. Uh, we're going to pray for others. Uh, Brother uh, Buck, his wife, she's got it. Uh, the Fergusons, they're down. Uh, think of the Taylors. Uh, think about Miss Juanita and, and Dwight, the Keys. I pray for them. Uh, I talked to uh, uh, Brother Jim and Miss Donna the other day, and, and uh, they, they have been released, but uh, he, I thought he may possibly be here this morning, him and Miss Donna, but unfortunately uh, they're probably still uh, in recovery, still, still trying to... It takes the sap out of you when, when you get this thing. It, it really does. But when you lift all these people up in, in prayer, and a lot of us know loved ones or people that we know that have been sick and down with different things, and so we want to lift them up in prayer. But we really need to talk to God about Miss Neve and Brother Gene this morning. And so before we do, in Psalms 23, the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's a promise with God. And when God gives a promise, he keeps his word. 
So, brothers and sisters, we have a God that cares. And he'll go above and beyond anything we say, think, or do. And that's why we're going to ask him. And I ask you to join me this morning to pray in a special prayer for Miss Neva, for the Jean, as they're going through such a difficult time. They said her vitals are shutting down. But I have a God that can restore. He gave them to her. And he can restore them in her. And I'm going to ask God to do that this morning. Y'all pray with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to the throne, thank you for the privilege. Lord, my heart goes out to my brother and his wife this morning as we start to think about the difficulty and the hardship of what they're dealing with. And I pray, dear Lord, you'll comfort and you'll heal, that you'll touch. There's many others of our family that are battling this awful sickness, and I pray, Lord, you'll touch and help them. Lord, I know that you have all ability and all power. There's no limitation with you. You said in your word that you set before us life that is good and death that is evil. You told us to pray for life, and Lord, we're asking for life this morning. We're asking that you restore her life and, and, and build her life. Let it be a time of shouting and rejoicing. But Lord, whatever does happen, we'll continue to keep trusting you. We'll continue to keep relying upon you, knowing that you have the ultimate say in all things. Lord, I am rejoicing to see Miss Judy this morning and watching her walk in. It's another testament of the great hand of you. And I pray, Lord, you'll just continue to touch each and every life in here. All of us have certain things that we've been battling with, loved ones that we're concerned about, situations of where they're at. One young lady that comes to my heart and mind right now. I pray, Lord, you'll help her to find the right path to get to the right location to where, Lord, you'll get her attention never to go back to the trash again. Lord, I pray that you'll help us in all these matters. Thy will be done. Be in the service today as only you can. Touch those that are at home. Be with Brother Alex. I think about uh, him and Miss Stormy. I think about others. I think about as we continue to go down our prayer list. Lift them each and every one up. And I pray, Lord, you'll just continue to help them as they go through and get to the other side. Remind us, dear Lord, that it was thy hand that brought us through it. And thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity to be a brighter light for you. We give you praise and glory for all things. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. You know, it's a wonderful day to be in God's house. Amen. And this morning, we got just a little bit, biz, bit of business that we want to take care of before we get started. Uh, of course, y'all know that uh, this is a special week, a special day. And uh, we just wanted to say a uh, happy birthday to Miss Amy for Thursday. And if you would, sing with me and sing her happy birthday. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Hey, don't feel bad. We didn't embarrass her none. She got embarrassed real good last night. <laughs> and if y'all want to see some pictures, just ask me after a while, and I'll show them to you. You can sit and laugh as much as I did. But I went home and sat and watched it three or four times. And that's <laughs> really, that's true. But also, we got another special thing that I'd like to do at this time, and the deacons had asked me to go ahead and do this. And I thought, well, since I'm up here, I'll go ahead and do it. But uh, today is Pastor Appreciation Day, and we would like to thank our pastor for being the wonderful person he is and the godly man that's uh, in our church. And they told me to give this to you and wanted you to open it up. And I said, well, I'll go ahead and let you have that and before we start singing. And you need to read it. I owe you $100. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That's, that's Melissa's Christmas present. <laughs> And by the way, Miss Amy, this one's yours. <laughs> I'm in trouble, ain't I? <laughs> they want me to let you have it. And you don't have to open that up, right? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you can if you want to, though. <laughs> and if something jumps out of it, it ain't my fault, it's Vern's. <laughs>
Thank you all. And that's sincere. You, you know, we give him a hard time sometimes, but uh, it, it's wonderful to come in and sit down in, in, in his office with him and talk with him and share about what God's doing in his family's life and me share what God's doing in my life. And, and we both sit there and share everything about what God's doing in this church. God's good. And he has blessed us so much. Don't ever doubt God. Amen. Because with God, all things are possible. Amen. 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 If you Amen. would, stand with me, please. Oh, how I love Jesus, page 183. Amen. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. That sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. He tells me of the Savior's love who died to set me free. He tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, he tells me one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, who in his sorrows bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh. Wood page 102, he hideth my soul. <laughs> A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. And covers me there with his hand. A wonderful Savior Jesus, my Lord, he taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up, and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. When clothed in his 
brightness transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky his perfect salvation is wonderful love I will shout with the millions on high he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land he hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand amen you may be seated I'd like to rejoice over and thank God for it truly is come on and we're going to receive an offering fellas uh, it is a blessing to see how God can touch people and heal them and what he does and I'm, I'm grateful for that but we do have some people that are hurting like I said and continue to pray for that but we are going forward and that's what we got to do we have to go forward it's what God expects out of us to go forward and as we do, I look forward to what is coming this month. Matter of fact, the 19th uh, through the 21st is the uh, Bible Convention. Uh, they're having their, uh, their uh, fellowship over there as they do every year this time of year. And for those of you that would like to go on the 19th, uh, if you'd like to go and everything, we need a list today. So if you're planning on or attempting to, give us an idea. See, that uh, as we go over that night and everything, they have dinner. They're going to have supper over there that night and so uh as we go over there and they also brother uh, brother bobby asked me he said he said if you if y'all could he said uh maybe bring some desserts so uh anybody like to uh bring some desserts up here for that that uh that evening we'll make sure to carry them over and, and if you'd like to join us now be sure and let me know he uh he asked uh, kind of how many people i'd be bringing with me when i come over that night that's the night of the 19th it's on monday night the 19th we're going over to the bnl uh fellowship and, and going to get with them we're going to have a service over there that night and they'll have it the 19th and the 20th now you said well, what about the 21st we have services here say amen right there sure enough I, we don't shut services down here for nothing say amen so we'll be here on the 21st but on the 19th and 20th we'll be going over there and being with brother Bobby in celebration of uh, uh, the Bibles and, and printing the Bibles and all like that and uh, so we'll be doing that now end of the month the last Tuesday of this month We'll be going over and correlating scriptures. They, they're going to be uh, open that day, and so we'll be able to go in and put scriptures together. For those of you that do that and like to do that, maybe you had never done it before, we invite you to come out and be a part of us. Amen, and do that. Now, the 31st, last day of the month, 31st, we're having our harvest festival around here. I didn't told you about the uh, maze that you'll be running through and, and all. And I, I, did I mention the tire? They're going back and forth and showing the Nerf deal through there for the kids and everything. We're going to do what is called a gauntlet. Some of y'all say, what in the world is a gauntlet? Does anybody know what a gauntlet is? All right, some of y'all already know. It'll be these bags swinging back and forth and everything. See, them kids got to go through all this thing. And if they go all the way through it and everything, whoever can go all the way through it and do it. And see, in order to do this little maze that we're setting up, this little, this little game we're setting up for the kids and everything, they got to know their Bible. Amen. And so that helps them through. It's like us going through life. In order to go through life, you got to know your Bible. Amen. Because if you know your Bible, it helps you know where to turn and, and what to avoid and, and what path you ought to be on. Say amen right there. You see, knowing your Bible, knowing the Word of God makes all the difference in the world. So we're going to do that. Now, what I need out of y'all between here and there, though, I need more candy. More candy. So if y'all would, uh, be sure and bring us some candy in. And uh, we'd love to, love to be sure and have all that now. Uh, also, I need a count. I need a count right now? All right. How many veterans... Do we have in here this morning? How many veterans? And you're going to be here, you, you plan on being here on, uh, on our Veterans Day, which will be the 15th of November. We're going to do Veterans Day that day. How many veterans? Do, keep them up. Let's see. Got one, two, three, which you were going to bring. You in, and if you're going to bring uh, somebody else with you, be sure to let me know. Four, five, six, seven, eight. It, 
9 and 10. There'll be 10 there. And you're just going to bring your dad, right? 11. And Brian is 12. 13. So roughly, Amy, we're thinking maybe 15 veterans, 16, somewhere in there. We had about 20, 21 up here last year. Or what was it? 25. Excuse me. We had 25 up here last year. The reason that is... Because we want to get y'all something special like we did last year. We want to make sure we have, we have something for everybody, that, for all our veterans that come, all right? So, uh, does that give you an idea, Mom? All right. Now, uh, and I, need a, I, I do need a head count of how many is going to a B&L conference. So, if y'all would, when you're leaving that today, let me know if you're planning on going over there, okay? So that I can get that back to Brother Bobby so that they know how much food to, to prepare and everything. And then, uh, ladies, let's see... Uh, about the desserts and everything. So if you if you maybe you're not going that night, but you still would like to bring a dessert, we sure would appreciate it. All right, all right. And then I mentioned the candy. Boy, sometimes there's too many notes, too too many messages for me to announce. Anyhow, isn't it good that God still sits on the throne? Sure enough. Danny, good to see you this morning. Boy, you're looking awful sharp. If you will, ask the blessing over the offering. Yes, Lord. Hey. It's wonderful to have a bunch of young, I call them young kids, okay? I'm 63 years old. We can call them young kids if we want to. But they always bless us here at our church and thank God for this youth that we've got here. Amen. Amen. Do you know what an impact these kids is making in their school and in our community? You think about it. 
This is our future generation. Yes, if God don't come take us out of here quick, we've got them growing up to take over and go on. Indeed, indeed. And I give them tasks to do every once in a while, and I ask them every once in a while to sing. So I hope that y'all enjoy this. They're going to bless us with this song. John, you're exactly right. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not, he will not depart from it. It's important what we put into these kids. It really is. It makes all the difference in the world. And I thank God for that. I, I thank God how God's using our kids around here. And I do pray for them all the time because they're under great, uh, uh, I guess, say, test, if you will, or uh, great temptations, things that, uh, unfortunately, that are getting thrown out of mud all the time. And so we do need to keep praying for these kids. But I tell you, that's one thing about being a, a, a believer. There are certain battles and struggles that you're going to go through. Certain obstacles and hurdles you're going to have to overcome. You've got your Bibles with you this morning. Romans in chapter number 7. Romans in chapter number 7. Today's message is entitled, Subject to. Just because I'm a believer doesn't let me off the hook. 
Just because I'm a believer doesn't mean all of a sudden everything, everything's going to be just a, a cakewalk, if you will. A matter of fact, uh, because I am a believer, I'm going to tell you, the heat's got turned up a lot more. Uh, the obstacles and the hurdles, the difficulties, the hardships and the heartaches, oh, it's, it, it's rough, and it really is. But I'm glad I don't have to go it alone. I, I, I was telling Amy, you know, uh, as we were getting ready to come to church and everything, I said, you know, I'd, I'd, hate to, I'd hate to have to do it without the Lord. I really would. I'd hate to have to do it without the Lord. I'm glad I got God on my side. I'm glad I have the Lord, aren't you? Uh, I'm serious. I, I wouldn't know how to do it without him. I've done it with him for so long. Matter of fact, uh, he's done it for me, and I thank God for that. He brought me to this moment, Brother John. He really has. He brought me to this moment, and I thank God for that. In Romans chapter 7, and verse number 14, if you're with me this morning, say amen. amen. Good to have you. Verse number 14, the Bible says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, so to understand. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, so to understand. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, I, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Now, I don't know about you, but that's one of those tongue twisters right there. Amen. See, if she sells seashells by the seashore. Eh? It, it, it gets wrapped up if you're not careful. But listen to what he's saying. It makes perfect sense. He says, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, here we are again, we're about what we know again. He says, for I know, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now this is the Apostle Paul talking here, and he's talking about sin that he's having to contend with. Here's a guy that God used, and I believe God used him to write 14 books of the New Testament. And I thank God for that, but I want you to understand something other today. As God is using Brother Paul here, he's revealing to you and I that even Brother Paul had to contend and deal with sin. It was, it was a reality. And by the way, if you're here today and you're a believer, you still have to contend with sin. It is a reality. Read on. Now, I do that which I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. That's called the law of nature. Amen. It's that human nature. And wrestling with that, battling with that, is something you another, know, unfortunately, is difficult to deal with. Read on. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. That's where Jesus resides. Amen. But I see another law in my members, warring against the, the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And the answer is this, brothers and sisters, I thank God. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Period. Period. There's only one. Period. Jesus Christ our Lord. Period. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Let's pray. Lord, I pray to speak to the hearts here today. Be with us today. I pray if there's one here that doesn't know you, they'll come to know you before it's everlasting too late. We do lift these up before you that are sick. Lord, we pray for them. But have your will and way in this message today. In Christ's name, amen. Go back with me, if you will. Verse 14, we're seeing here things that we know. You know, I, I begin to kind of ponder and think all the way back to where things started. Y'all know back at that start, right, right, way, way back at the beginning, you know, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created. And as God created a man and put him into the garden, we found that out through the scriptures. And we realized that God put us in the garden and things were going pretty good for a while. Amen. Matter of fact, when God put us in the garden, Brother Jeff, he put us there with a warning label. Now, I don't know how many of y'all went and bought appliances or, or, or have uh, things around your house that uh, you started using it and you never looked at the warning label. Matter of fact, the other day I did something rather uh, foolish. I, I, I want you to understand. I, I was going to put a camera outside so that when people come knock on that door outside, I can 
I can tell when they're there. Because if y'all ever come to the church and my truck is out there, if I don't come to the door, it's because I don't hear you. When I'm in my cave back over there, Brother William, you can testify to this. When I'm in my little cave back over there, I don't have any windows. I don't have any windows in there. And uh, I'm, I'm back away from, I don't hear anything at the door. So when you come and beat on that door, and I don't hear you. Amen? I, I, I just don't. So I'm not trying to avoid you or anything like that. Just kind of give you a heads up. If you ever come to that door and everything, I don't hear you. I do not hear you. So we're going to put a camera out there. And uh, as we were going to put the camera out there, I thought, well, instead of ha having this thing plugged in, I'll just cut the wire right here. And I'll wire it in directly to keep it hot all the time. My problem was I didn't look at the little converter that that thing was the plug-in that converted it from AC to DC. Now, here's the thing. I know electricity. I've had electrical training. But I didn't look at the label. I didn't look at the label. And even though I know electricity, and sometimes it's like getting in the vehicle driving saying, you know, I know the way, and then we get down the road there, and we hate to ask for directions. Amen. Come on now, amen. Right? Because we ought to know it. What we ought to know and what we do know are two different things. And I know electricity. I know how to wire things. I've had three years of electrical training. But I didn't look at the converter and see on there where it converts it from AC to DC. And as quick as we cut the switch back on, that little camera went, poof! And I was on the phone crying to Brother John, saying, Brother John, I've loaded up the camera. <laughs> Got to get another one. What happens? Am I the only one that's ever done that? <laughs> you know why? We didn't look at the warning label. Let me ask you this question. How do you think we got in the message, the, in the situation that we're in this morning? Because we didn't pay attention to the warning label. We didn't look at it. He told us. He warned us. But we bypassed and did our own thing. Genesis chapter 2. Go there with me. Genesis 2.15. The Bible says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Their job was to dress and to keep it. Y'all keep that understood. They were to dress it and keep it. You say, why is that important? We're getting to it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Every tree you may freely eat. But hold on. But of, but of, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt, eat of, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, as God's talking here, he already knows what man's going to do. It's like you're telling the kid, don't touch that over there. Excuse me, don't touch that over there. And what's the first thing they want to do? Touch it. Touch it. Oh, oh, yeah, y'all know Benji, don't you? Benji, don't touch it. Yeah. Got to get his hands all over it. It's in our nature. It's in our nature. We didn't listen to the warning label. So guess what we do? We call God up and say, God... Blow the camera up. Right? Because we didn't listen to the warning label. God said, don't touch it. He warned us. And we went on and did our own thing. Genesis 3, go there with me. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And said unto the woman, warning label. Then the serpent, who was more subtle than any beast of the field. You're going to have these slick-tongued devils come along in your life, waiting and ready to hoodoo you. If you don't listen to the warning label, if you don't listen to the warning label, you'll get yourself in a real heartache and hardship. Why, God? Why? Why? Because you didn't listen to the warning label. You didn't pay attention. You thought you were above it. No, you're subject to it. Read on. 
Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Comes at her, he's challenging her. This is what she says. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of uh, the fruit of the trees of the garden. If she'd stopped right there, she's okay. She goes on, look what she says. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it. Stop! Stop! Don't go any further! Now she's stretching the scripture. Now she's twisting the scriptures to say something to suit her condition and her circumstance. You say, what are you talking about? Well, she wasn't doing what she was supposed to, and that's touching things. God never did tell them not to touch it. On the contrary, he told them to touch it. In order to purge something, you had to get in there and cut things off. Y'all with me? In order to purge it, in order to prune it, in order to take care of it, you had to get your hands on it. But she wasn't touching anything. She's being lazy. Amen. She's out there not doing what she's supposed to be doing. And now she's stretching. Well, we're not even supposed to touch it. Huh? She's covering herself. Read it right there. It's right there. <clears throat> but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said that you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it. That she die. That ain't what God said. Go back. Verse 16 of chapter 2, And the Lord God commanded the, commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the garden, of, but, of the, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now what did he tell them before that? He put them in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. They were there to take care of the garden, and they weren't taking care of the garden. He didn't listen to what God said. Now here she is, she's in a fix. She's in a real pickle. Read on. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For Lord God doth not know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall see, and, and ye shall be as gods, and no good and evil. The devil has really wrecked our lives over the years with falsehoods and partial truths. Falsehoods and partial truths. Some of the things the devil's saying is uh, partially right. Their eyes will be open and they will know good and evil, but they are, they're going to die. They're going to die. You see, a lot of times when we read scripture, we think, oh, it's instant. It's going to happen just like that. Mm -hmm. See, death came to them. When they ate of the fruit, they spiritually died. That's why... They were separated from God at that point in time. They died spiritually. The physical came later. The physical came later. Read on. Today we're lifting our sister Neva up to the Lord. Why? Because we're praying physically she don't die. Amen. Y'all with me? That's what we're doing. We're praying. Seeking the Lord. Because it's in his hands. The point of man wants to die and after this the judgment. It's something that comes to us all. Death. Read on. God does know in the days that ye thereof, your eyes shall be open and shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, meaning it ain't going to instantly kill me, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. It appealed to her. This ain't the first time, or excuse me, this ain't the only time that we see throughout scriptures that things appeal to people. Lot got himself into trouble. Why? Because the lights of Sodom and Gomorrah appealed to him. Caused him to long after. Before you know it, he was right there in amongst them. I remember the prodigal son. There was a lot of things that appealed to him. He said, Daddy, give me my living. And he did, and he took his journey to a place that appealed to him. And after he wasted his living with righteous living, he was in one. Why? 
Because as the Bible says, there's pleasure in sin for a season. It does appeal. It does have its appeal, but it sure does have its bite. It sure does have its bite. At what cost? Well, let's read on. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They knew their condition. They knew their circumstance. They knew they messed up. Brother John, it didn't take me too long after I flipped that switch where I said, uh-oh, I've killed this one. It didn't take me long at all. I knew what I had done. Hmm? You ever messed up and knew it? Can't do nothing about it now. Can't back that truck up. It ain't going to get away from it no more. Why? That damage is done. They knew. They knew. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, like God always had. Adam and his wife uh, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, uh, God amongst the trees of the garden. Like that's going to work. The Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? He said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and, the, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And by the way, in chapter 2, they were naked, and it wasn't a problem. Chapter 2, they were naked, and there was no shame. You say, well, preacher, what's happened? Sin's coming to the picture. Sin's crept in there. Sin's take up, took up residency on them. Amen. Now they're subject to something that they don't have control over anymore. Read on. Hit ourselves. He said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told thee that thou was naked? You know what? Isn't it amazing when you start dealing with children and before you know it, you know, kids, y'all will always tell off on yourselves. There's that. It's a natural order. It happens. You think you're covering yourself, but... That's why when you go to court and you start talking, they like to get you talking. Because if they get you talking, they got you. You're thinking you're going to bail yourself out. You're thinking your words will get you out of this thing. You're better off to have laryngitis that day. Amen. Because when you talk, sooner or later, insert foot. Right. Amen. Y'all with me? That's what they do. They get you going down this path thinking everything's going to be okay. And before you know it, Brother John, you told them everything. You told them everything. He tells all. God asks one question. Well, who told you you were naked? Naked was never an issue before. You didn't have no problems with it before. Why do you have an issue with it now? See, God already knew the answer. He's just trying to reveal it to them. How foolish that they had been. Read on. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The, the, the woman who, who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and, and I did eat. Now he didn't lie, that's exactly what happened, but you coward. You gonna throw her under the bus and uh, blame her and sham her up for it? Coward. Take what's coming to you, buddy. Amen. It's yours to carry. Hey, God told you, Adam. Then he gave her to you. It was his responsibility and he didn't carry it out. He tries to sham her. He tries to throw it back on her. I've heard a lot of people say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to slap Eve. No, you're not. No, you're not. We're all subject. We're all subject to it. She just happened to be the first lady. Okay. Read on. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is, it, is this that thou hast done? The woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Wasn't it amazing how we like to push a lot of things off on the old devil? There was a big movement going around years ago when I was a kid. The devil made me do it. Really? He put a gun to your head. Well, yeah. It's an amazing thing what we like to pass the buck to other people. 
instead of owning up to your own circumstance and situation. Read on. The Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He's talking about Jesus coming. That's a prophetic passage of scripture right there. That's prophecy. Talking about the seed. Because that's out of the norm, Brother Jeff. That's not the normal way. That's an unusual way. And under the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conceptions in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast not eat, and has eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field, and in the sweat of thy face. The sweat of thy face. Shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. It's where we came, it's where we're going back to. For dust we are, and dust we shall return. That brings me to another thing I want to really point out to you this morning. Romans 3, 9. What then? What then? Are we better than they? No and no wise. For we have both proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. Because if you go back to the start, it's what happens. It's what it is. Read on. As it is written, there is none rich. Get my, uh, hold on one second. The fact is, Brother John, sin is a falling that each and every one of us has to deal with. There is none of us in here that doesn't have to deal with sin. We all do. The Bible says in verse number 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you're in here this morning, you have sinned. It's part of our existence. Now because we have fallen, because we have done what we have done, we're all on the same road heading to hell. Without Jesus Christ, there's no hope. But thank God to verse number 5, or excuse me, verse number, get my, get my verses right, verse number 6 of chapter 5. Go there with me. Romans 5, verse number 6. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Look what he says. Verse number 6 says, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for the righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commands his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even though, Brother Tom, we are deserving of hell, even though we didn't listen to what God said, even though that we did wrong, God's given us a way out. He died for us. But I hear people say, does Jesus really love us? Why would a loving God allow all these things to happen on this earth? Now, I don't know about you, but as a parent, I have worn my children away from certain things. But in spite of what daddy says, in spite of what I've warned them about, sometimes experience will have to teach them. I've warned them, I've told them, how many of you have seen a child, if you told them don't touch it, and you know it's going to burn them, and they wouldn't burn their hands anyways. It's what happened. Sometimes you sit there to shake your head and say, I've told them, I've warned them, I've told them, I've warned them. All right, go ahead. Ah, I know, I told you. Too late. God does us the same way. He's warned us. 
Here in America, we can't say we haven't been warned. He's warned us. Sometimes we forget how much subject we are to these things. Adam and Eve didn't pay attention to the warning label. They got themselves in trouble, didn't they? And here we are continuing that for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. It is something that we all have to deal with now because we're subject to it. But God, but God, commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Aren't you glad that God gave us a way to escape? Aren't you glad that he provided hope for us? Romans 8, verse number 18. Romans 8, verse number 18. Look at it with me this morning. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What that tells me, Brother Tom, is i got a brighter day coming. This is temporal right now. Right now it's temporal. I told Brother Gene this morning, he said, Brother, Brother Shane, he says, you're my family, Brother. Brother Gene, you're my family. We love Brother Gene. Amen. Very dear. Brother Gene's been a part of this church since 1980. God bless Brother Gene. Miss Neva, God bless them. Whatever God does, I'm praying for a miracle. And I pray God will take Miss Neva and put her right back on her feet. And I'm praying for a miracle. That may not happen. That may not happen. But you know what? Like I told Brother Gene this morning, I said, praise God. She'll be in heaven. And before long, we'll be in heaven right with her in the Lord. I look forward to that. I know that. I know that. It's not just words. I know. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now, I think back to a child being born. And I remember all the agony and the pain as I heard Amy cry out and beg and plead and this, that, and the other. And all of a sudden, once that baby was born, she didn't beg and complain and and cry anymore. I mean, she didn't even talk about that stuff anymore. All she wanted to do was hold that baby. The rest of that stuff faded away. And that's the way it is right now. Yes, we're begging and pleading. We're in agony. We're going through all the hardships and the heartaches. But praise God, it's not the end of the story. we got a brighter day coming. Looking forward to what God's prepared for us. So look what he says. For the earnest expectation of the creature... Waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. We're waiting for that, Brother John. Anxious. Anticipation, if you will. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly. Made subject to vanity. Not willing. How many of y'all grew up in this world saying, Hey, I would to God that Adam and Eve hadn't eaten the fruit. That's what he's talking about. But guess what? We're still subject to it. Because how we came into the world. Read on. Subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subject to the same in hope. And thank God for hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And that's what God's done for us. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. That's why right now our heart goes out to those that are suffering. Amen. Why? Because our hearts are breaking for those folks. We're groaning. We don't like that. How many of y'all like to see a loved one suffer? Exactly. It tears us up. But we know that it is temporary. We know it's not going to last forever. Read on. It's temporal, if you will. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. That's what's happening. Not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit... Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. So here's the thing. Miss Judy, I got saved over 30, well, nearly 37 years ago. I got saved. But here's the deal. Ever since then, I long for the Lord's return, and I long for that glorified body. Think about that cane right now. It helps you get around. Think about that glorified body. You won't ever have to have that cane ever again. Amen. Think about that little cart that you got right there. You're not going to have to have that little cart anymore. Amen. You looking for that, Jane? Amen. What a great day. But until then, we're going to groan and travail in the agony that we're having to go through. Why?
because we didn't listen to the warning. Because we didn't listen to the warning. Read on. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. And that's what mode we're in right now. We're in waiting mode. We're patiently waiting. So I look out across the landscape, Danny. I realize that the Lord's return is near. You know how come I know that? I've studied this book. He's given us some information on when he's coming, and I thank God for that. Now, Brother William, as I see the signs of the times, and I realize that the near, the nearer that his return is, I get excited about that part of it, but it doesn't mean that things won't get harder and more difficult in the process. But here's the deal. Just because we're subject to sin doesn't mean we have to obey it. Just because we're subject to sin doesn't mean that we have to obey it. The fact of the matter is, God said in his word in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, God said, he will not put more on you than you're able to bear. And what, what comes on you in your life, he gives a way to escape. So don't tell me, don't tell me that you can't go forward. You can. Just remind yourself of this. We're all subject to this sin. Let a man think it he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. We need to remember that. What God's saying is, Ed, you're subject to falling. You may not realize that. You may not know that. But in all honesty, if Adam and Eve would have listened to God's word, that warning label, it would have kept them out of a lot of heartache and a lot of hardship. Here we are today, Miss Claudia. God said, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. You know why? Because we're all subject to fall. And if we'll listen to his word, it will keep us grounded. It will keep us secure. It'll keep a lot of heartache and hardships out of our lives. You see, his word makes all the difference in the world. My question to you today is, what will you follow? What will you listen to? Go back to the scriptures. One verse. I'm going to call it quits. Verse 14. For ye know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, so to understand. We know who we are. We know what we're dealing with. We know where our shortcomings are. My question to you is, what are you going to do about it? Don't put on no games and play no to play like you like like you're okay. I got news for you. We're all subject to fall. We're all subject to fall. And before you know it. You'll get yourself in a real fix if you don't keep that before you. We're all subject to it. Look at what Paul says all the way down through here. He's resting. He says, who's going to deliver me from this body of sin? Well, the answer is Jesus Christ. But you're subject to it. Maybe you're sitting here today and you never accepted Jesus. I'd invite you to step out today before it's everlasting too late. Maybe you're at home and... You need, you need to go to your knees and ask Christ in your heart. I don't know what your need is this morning. Maybe you're a Christian this morning, but you've been looking to the wrong things and trusting the wrong things. You've not been listening to the warnings that God's been giving to you. i got news for you. It's important to listen to that warning label. It really is. Because not to listen will get you into a real fix. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts here this morning. I pray, Lord, bring us to our knees. Thy will to be done, dear Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. What page, Brother John? Page 280. 280. 280. You guys put your heart all stand. You come. 280. Sing it, Brother John. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earth. Sleep tenderly, Jesus.
Couldn't back up after that. Damage was done. Then Adam took his bite. It's too late. Damage is done. You know, we need to remember what we're subject to. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. We're all subject to. And it can happen a lot quicker than we could even imagine. That's why we need each other. That's why we need to lift each other up. That's why we need to encourage each other. That's why we need to love one another. Because we're all subject to it. Thank God for the opportunity. Appreciate you being here this morning. Continue to pray for these different ones. Brother Byrne, somebody said you might have had something to do with that one little deal and everything. If you will, brother, dismiss us in prayer.